In this video, I want to talk about how to create ideas and make content for a climate-themed zine. To start, find a topic or current event that interests you. It could be a news article about a specific event that is happening. It could be an animal that is facing extinction whose story interests you. It might even be something happening in your local community, like a new recycling program or a beach cleanup or a plan developed by your city to reduce pollution. You might find yourself drawn to positive stories that celebrate environmental wins, or you might want to make a zine about something that upsets you or that you think shouldn't be happening. Whatever feelings or ideas you want to explore are completely valid. The beauty of a zine is that it represents your perspective and your feelings. It's your art, so pick something that you care about and inspires you to write, draw, or otherwise create some type of content for a zine. For purposes of this video, I'm going to make a very simple zine about plastic pollution and its effect on the ocean. One of the things I have found very upsetting over the last few years is hearing stories about scientists finding single-use plastic in some of the deepest parts of our oceans. This is an evidence-based concept so I did a little research to find these articles to refresh my memory about the details. You are welcome to make your zine about facts like these, or you can focus on your emotions and other perspectives you want to share. Some people definitely make factual zines intended to spread awareness or get information into people's hands. Other folks make zines that are more artistic and might tell a fictional story or even a personal story. They might interpret their idea through poetry or collage or even just use images. Any technique that appeals to you is the perfect way to create your zine because it's true to you. I decided to use the accordion fold format because I want to tell the story of the deep sea and I thought it would be cool to create a really long vertical format that shows all the way from the surface of the sea to the deepest depths. You might want to do something similar if you think a certain type of book format fits your idea best. A pamphlet stitch book usually has more pages, so if you want to create a lot of content, that might be a good fit. A Starfold mini book has six pages and is a creative format for a quick read or one that you want to tuck into a pocket or somewhere small. So experiment with various formats and make your zine unique. There's really no wrong way to do it. If you want to reproduce your zine on a copy machine, keep in mind that many printers only print 85 by 11 easily. Some print shops will print bigger sizes but can cost a little more. If you're using a pamphlet stitch, you might want to copy or scan all your pages before you sew or staple it together. Likewise for the accordion, if you are gluing a few pieces together, make sure to copy or scan your individual pieces of paper first. It will save you a lot of time and effort when you want to make copies of your zine. If you want to make one unique zine, that's totally fine too. I sometimes like to use paint or collage elements that don't reproduce as well. In that case, you end up with one really interesting zine that people can interact with and experience all the textures and components you added. It's also a really cool way to reuse recycled papers or incorporate old magazines and newspapers or old wrapping papers or decorative paper that you might otherwise throw away or not have a use for. So now I want to quickly go through how I created my zine. You don't have to follow my process, in fact you'll probably find a style and process you like even better. This is just to show you how I work and to hopefully inspire some ideas for you. So I started with a basic accordion fold zine using just two sheets of 8.5 by 11 paper. I sketched out a few key ideas I wanted to include in the zine about depths and zones of the ocean, as well as some of the animals that live in those regions. Then I moved to my actual zine and quickly sketched out the basics right on the zine itself. This included a title, I'm calling my zine Deep Sea Plastics, along with ocean depths, creatures, and a bunch of plastic debris. I went through this pretty quickly, only for purposes of keeping this video short, but you can take as much time as you want or need to include whatever details or elements are important to you.
At this point, I used ink pens to go over my rough sketches. I wanted to finalize the sketches with a little more detail, but I also wanted you to be able to see it more clearly on the video. Feel free to use any materials you want for your zine. That could be pencil, paint, markers, or other art supplies. To make this zine, I used pencils, a white eraser, and a few art pens. These two brands are called Microns and Faber-Castell Pit Pens. I like these because they are waterproof, so when I add my watercolor, it doesn't make the ink run. But you can use any art supplies you like. I also use some Payne's Gray watercolor and a cheap watercolor brush. Now that I have the basic concept inked onto the zine, I'm going to use a little watercolor to highlight the dark depths of the sea. You could use as many or as few colors as you want, or you could keep your zine in black and white. Black and white is really popular in zine making because it makes it easier and cheaper to reproduce on a copy machine, but I'm just making one copy of my zine today for fun. Once I was done inking and painting my zine, I let it dry. Because of the watercolor, the lightweight paper got a little wrinkled. This is common with paints, glue, and collage. You can use thicker paper to minimize this a bit. In this case, once my zine was dry, I placed it under a few heavy books to press it flat. This can help with buckling and wrinkling in the paper. Just make sure your zine is completely dry before you press it, otherwise the pages may stick together. So here's my completed scene. To recap, I started with an idea that I care a lot about, which is ocean plastics. Then I did some research to see what scientists are saying and finding on this issue right now. Once I'd brainstormed lots of ideas, I settled on the accordion style zine to illustrate the depths of the ocean. Then I sketched out my ideas in my sketchbook and started working in pencil right on my zine. Once the pencil work was done, I inked it using waterproof pens and added watercolor for a bit of detail and contrast. Once my zine was totally dry, I pressed it under a few heavy books to get a crisper, flatter book. Now my zine is done. Good luck creating your own climate-themed zines, and remember, the most important part of making zines is to have fun, be creative, and share your own perspective. Thank you so much, everyone.